Hey everyone, this is Ross. In today's video, I'm gonna take you guys on the journey of pruning my four-year-old Rosianca persimmon tree. And Rosianca is a Asian slash American hybrid. Um, here in zone 7A in the Philadelphia area, it's almost Christmas time here, so happy holidays everybody out there who celebrates Christmas. Um, so we could have actually pruned this when we harvested our fruits, but we decided, I decided not to because I wanted to wait until I really had the greatest information I could get my hands on. There's not a whole lot of information out there on growing persimmons, on pruning them, on different techniques, on training them, on harvesting, uh, removing the astringency. There's not really a great, a, you know, a, the greatest information out there, but there is a book uh, that was published by I think universities and, and uh, people that really know what they're talking about in New Zealand. So I got this book, Growing Persimmons in New Zealand, and I read through that, and it's, it really is widely regarded as one of the best sources of information regarding persimmons. And uh, after reading that, it kind of really helped solidify my thoughts on this. And, and essentially what I can, I can tell you is that persimmons don't really like to be pruned all that much. And the reason for that, there's a couple reasons, but we're really trying to keep our tree in hormonal balance. If, especially a young tree like this, I know it's only four years old, uh, or you may think, wow, four years old, that's a long time, depending on how new you are at this. Four years old is not a long time, guys. It's a very young tree. Um, usually around year five or six, you could maybe start to say it's starting to mature, and eventually it's gonna start to slow down its vigor, and it's gonna put out a lot of fruit. But it's very easy for these trees to grow and grow and grow. Maybe they'll flower quite a bit, but they won't set their fruits. They'll drop their fruits um, year after year. And that causes a big issue with a lot of growers. And there's always a, big, a lot of questions I get every year regarding these persimmon trees. So I think if we do this now, we, we really have the right pruning techniques. Now, it really does affect the tree later in terms of the production and really just overall less headaches, right? We all want fruit. That's our goal here. And I think everybody should have a certain objective in their mind when they are pruning any tree. With the persimmon, I think the objective here for a young tree, doesn't matter where you live, we should be trying to control that vigor and getting it to fruit heavily for us. That'll keep it in the right hormonal balance. Um, so when we think about pruning this, we're really not gonna prune it a whole lot. If we were to prune any tree for the most part, very hard, a hard prune, let's say this branch here is a foot long. If I were to take off six inches of this, that's a hard prune. If I were to even take off maybe 33% of the branch, let's say if I were to take off three inches of growth out of the, out of the well, out of the 12, let's say four inches of growth, uh, that's, you know, you could even maybe consider that some hard pruning or maybe even some medium pruning. We really want to keep it pretty minimal. And what I would recommend is that when we come in here and do our pruning, we're not really heading back these branches because if you were to take off the tips and a lot of these, these buds further up on the branches, these are where the flowers come out of next year. The flowers form on New Year's growth so the growth in the spring, but from wood from the prior year. So if I were to cut this all the way back and I were to coppice this or pollard it, we wouldn't have good success in terms of getting this to fruit. It would, very, it would just grow all year for the most part. So that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to preserve a lot of these flowers. We want it to flower a lot. It may not keep and hold on to all those, those fruits, but we do want it to flower. So that's important to keep in, in, into consideration here. But also I wanna think about the spacing of these branches. And I'd rather, instead of heading back a branch, let's say taking off 33% of the entire tree, right? As what most people suggest for a lot of trees, we're gonna come in here and we're actually gonna thin this out. So if we have a branch system here and a branch system here, I'm gonna take the one out in the middle and then there you go, that's my pruning. And I'm gonna thin this out rather than, like I said, head back every branch by 33%. So I think that's really um, 
something that's overlooked and I think that's a better way to keep the tree in hormonal balance is by thinning rather than heading the branches back. So what you really want to assess though first with your tree is if you like the form. Now a persimmon can be grown in many different forms. The most common is the central leader. By having it as a central leader, um, it's just going to grow straight up in the air, kind of like a, a spruce tree or a, an evergreen tree that you kind of see like this, where it just grows straight up. You can see there's two growth points here where it's finally split off, but usually there's one growth point at the top and there's one single trunk and everything branches off of that, kind of like a Christmas tree. Um, so for me, I've decided not to go that route. And my reasoning for this is that I don't get a whole lot of sunlight in this particular location. You can see the sun's shining right now, but we're on the west side of the house. This is west, the sun's gonna set. During the growing season, the sun gets over this tree here, comes this way, and goes out this way to finally set behind this house. And this is about noon that it passes here, so I really only have about six, seven, maybe eight hours of light, depending on the time of the year, for this particular persimmon tree. And for a lot of us, that's just not enough. Um, they can handle it and they'll fruit, but I want more fruit. And one of the things I learned in growing persimmons in New Zealand is that it's very common for these young trees to just not hold on to a lot of fruit. They drop fruit every single year. So what's one nice little solution here is actually to put them in an area that has a lot of sunlight. So in addition to this, I was also recommended in that book to grow my tree as instead of a central leader, but an open center and to break this whole thing up so that we can really bring some, some light into the center of the tree. So what I'm gonna do, and I've already done this, is I came up in here, guys, at the top of the tree and we actually took off that main central leader right there and that was a lot of growth we were actually approaching believe it or not on a four-year-old tree 20 feet tall so this is not what we want we don't want vigor and vigor and growth and growth all these vertical shoots here are not really going to fruit all that much for us it's really this growth down here that's actually growing horizontal some of it's even growing towards the ground and downwards that fruits a lot heavier than this stuff up in the air. It's really pretty much useless to us unless we want that for form at a later date. So I've kind of thinned out and opened this up in a way, but you could make an argument that because the sun comes over from this way and comes this way, this section of the tree gets more light than this section of the tree. So I want to kind of help this scaffold here. You can see this nice scaffold here and you can see even maybe this scaffold you can make an argument for and this guy down here we want this to get a lot of light and we need to take out some of this growth up here and maybe thin this out to bring that light to this section of the tree um, so it really depends on where you guys live right what your situation is but i'm going to take a little bit a little bit off the top even further i'm going to show you guys a different angle here as I do this. I think you guys will be able to see that. Let me just make sure my wire is an issue here. And I'm going to come in here and thin out the top of this tree. And we want to make bigger cuts to start. We don't want to really be spending a lot of time too much in the beginning of this process. Excuse me while I cut this, guys. So we want to try to make this on an angle. All of our cuts. That wasn't the best angle we got it on. But there is some sort of an angle there. But essentially what I've just done is made a bigger cut. And I want to talk about a bigger cut here for just a minute. Well, we've come in here and we've kind of let some light out to then reach these back future scaffolds on the tree. If we think about, we look at the main trunk here, the tree, 
you can see it goes up and there's all these little scaffolds that are forming. There's one here that's forming. There's one here that's forming. There's one here, which we just cut off a piece of that, which is now going off, off into this direction. We have one here that's coming more towards us. And, and of course, back towards the side of the tree that isn't getting a whole lot of light. So what I'm kind of preventing from happening now is kind of helping this side of the tree and not this side of the tree because this side of the tree is going to get more light it's going to be a lot easier for growth to happen there we don't want to shade out the other side so i think that's a nice solution for now maybe we have to look at this again in the future but that's really it those are our big cuts we didn't make the other one on camera unfortunately but you want to come in here and inspect pretty much this really dense material which of these scaffolds, let's say, maybe we have a scaffold that's touching the ground. Maybe we have something that doesn't look right. Maybe it's not spaced correctly in the overall form of this tree. If I back up for you guys, you can kind of see it's really nice, has a nice symmetrical form to it. This section of the part of the tree is kind of bare because that's the darker side of the tree. But overall, we look pretty good. And I have no real complaints. We're just really coming in here with the bigger cuts and spacing all this out. But again, we don't want to be pruning off too much, right? Didn't I say that? All right, so now we can inspect the tree and look for any de diseased or damaged or dead wood and cut that out. I came in here and made some cuts along the top here. We did some of this actually in the summer. Um, and I took out a lot of that upwards growing growth. We thinned out some of this growth. You could see there is one here, one here, and one in the middle. We took out the one in the middle. We thinned this out a little bit. We did the same thing over here. You can see one growing that way, one growing that way, and there was one in the center here. We took out the one in the center. And uh, yeah, that's just a good way to thin this out. We could also do it right here. Here's another example. We have one here and one here. We could thin this out. And we can take that whole branch out if we wanted. I'd also recommend kind of trying to remove a lot of these upward shoots if we can. Like, you know, this branch as, a, as an example over here is really not looking that good. We have one here, we have one there, we have one there. So I could say to myself, you know what? We could just take this whole thing out. And you know what? I think I'm going to. So let's take this whole thing out. There you go. And now we've got ourselves two branches growing this way and one the other way. The unfortunate part is now we have a branch that's sort of growing towards the center. That's something else we don't really want. So if I'm really thinking about this well, I'm gonna start taking out some of this growth that's shading out different parts or the center of the tree. So maybe I'll take this system of branches out, right? That's growing towards the center. We don't really have a whole lot of dead or diseased or damaged wood. So we're kind of just moving on from here. We can take this branch out growing towards the center and this branch out. And I think I will take this branch out up here and I should come in actually to this point. Maybe I should use my saw for this. Definitely use different tools, guys. Have two different tools, one for the heavier duty stuff. Excuse the camera work here, guys. This is incredibly difficult with just, just me here. Yeah, I'm gonna have to put you guys down. So let me just take this out real quick. All right, so that's coming out. And let's also take, by the way, a moment here to look at the main trunk of the tree and look at the scaffolds. I've noticed there is some scaffolds here, future scaffolds that are coming off the main trunk off a cut we made, I think the prior year. So this is new growth coming out of a cut that we made. And to be honest with you, I don't like that. And that's kind of what you just have to say to yourself. What do you not like? 
So I do like this scaffold here for potentially in the future, but there is a scaffold right literally right next to it, right below it. So why even have that? Why even have this stuff? I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna cut all this out. All right, we took two of them out. And I think we're gonna actually take this out as well. All right, so we're looking good. I think that's mostly what I wanted to cut out of the tree. And you can get really particular with this and we could get really scientific and we could really spend a lot of time on this, but those are really the basics here. Making the bigger cut, thinning out some of these branches, um, taking out the damaged wood, the diseased wood, all that stuff. What I'd recommend now, I want to talk to you guys about the fruit drop here. So if you notice, another reason why we could be getting some fruit drop is we actually have some gutter systems here. Another one here. And there's a lot of water that then collects here when it rains and it can go down this direction here. But this tree is probably uptaking a lot more water than you'd think. And because of that, there's a potential that it's actually getting too much water during the bloom time or doing during the fruit set time and that was another reason why growing persimmons in New Zealand recommended that I could be struggling. So this may not be the best site. It's certainly not the best site in terms of how windy it is in this location. This is an extremely windy location and that's just a shame but you know what it is what it is. We've got ourselves a stake here and we've got this thing in intact, but it is blowing pretty much this other way because the wind's coming from over here and it comes down this corridor. Um, I wish we had a little bit more sun, but this water here is kind of a big issue. And I think we're gonna have to watch out for that. Another reason for the fruit drop or potentially is actually the soil. And we've been building up soil here for three or four years. You can see all these wood chips I have underneath my jujubes, and you can see that the wood chips eventually break down and form compost. And that compost feeds the soil, builds the soil life, adds nutrients, excess nutrients, creates more growth, more vigorous growth. Too much nitrogen is a bad thing. And then we actually have less fruit set that way and we have a higher chance of of dropping our fruits so overall we don't want to be watering this all that much especially here in my climate we don't want to be feeding them all that much and uh yeah that's sort of it guys i think those are the big points here getting that light to come into the tree is another reason another way we can help keep the fruits on our tree and uh yeah um, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. You learned something. Um, thin them out. Make the nice cuts for the size, the bigger cuts for the size, the symmetry of the tree. Um, choose the form that you want. You can also grow these kind of like almost in a spiet, believe it or not. They're doing that. Um, yeah, this is a tree. If I let it get as tall as it wants, it'll be uh, 40 feet tall. So... Got to head it back at some point here, guys. And uh, I probably could, even if I wanted to do, if I wanted to do this even crazier, I could make a giant cut right here and take off everything from this point upwards and really open up the center of this tree. And I would even, I would, I would strongly consider that. I really would. And I think that would make a lot more sense. Um, maybe down the road, we'll see if I want to do that. But uh, yeah, it's never too late, guys. Never too late. And if you guys messed up with your cuts, you think you pruned your persimmon incorrectly, I think a good way you'll know is if your fruit's held on. Um, as we did last year, we really pruned this heavily and it put out a lot of growth, guys. Um, and by pruning it so heavily, I... I do really regret that and I wish I had a lot more fruits this year, especially for the size of the tree. It didn't bear nearly as much. So 
like I said in the beginning of this, with careful pruning, we'll have that right balance that we're looking for. And of course, we're gonna have the fruit set that we're looking for. And overall, I think you guys should just grow persimmons, man. Um, it's probably becoming my favorite fruit now. They're so easy to grow. Um, yeah, I think you guys should just keep them out of the wind. Um, keep them in the right soil moisture, give them enough sun, and you're going to have a very long-lived tree that puts out tons and tons of fruit that's extremely tasty that you can't find almost anywhere. So we'll talk to you guys soon. All right. Thank you all for watching this one. Uh, subscribe if you enjoyed this. You want to see more on persimmons. We're going to talk a lot more about persimmons in the future. Take care, guys. See you for tomorrow's video.